Hello and welcome to our pre-lab presentation on the nervous tissues. Now, when we take a look at the nervous tissues, uh, keep in mind that there are two categories of cells that can be present. Uh, the first cells are going to be the neurons, and these are the cells that are uh, specialized for the sending and receiving of electrical and chemical uh, signals throughout the body. And so if we take a look at the neuron, the, the classic definition of a neuron, classic description of a neuron, is that you're going to have a, a fairly distinct, fairly large uh, cell body. And remember from the lecture, we talked about the cell body also being called in some books the soma or the perikaryon, perikaryon for around the nucleus. We take a look at the nucleus, uh, we can see again a, a relatively large nucleus, fairly euchromatic, so pale staining uh, presence to the nucleus, uh, as well as uh, a distinct nucleolus uh, present there. Uh, again, remember from the nucleolus, that's where we're going to be producing. Uh, the ribosomal RNA, and so that's going to be an indication that we're dealing with a cell that is highly metabolically active, involved with synthesizing a lot of protein. We look out into the cytoplasm. Uh, within the cytoplasm of the cell, uh, we're going to have what's referred to as initial bodies. Uh, this is going to be kind of a basophilic, kind of granular staining appearance to the cytoplasm. And the reason for this granular staining appearance is because we're going to have a lot of ribosomes present, both free ribosomes for synthesizing things that are used within the, the, the cytoplasm of the cell, uh, things like the cytoskeletal elements that we've talked about in the lecture, as well as rough endoplasmic reticulum associated ribosomes. And again, the rough endoplasmic reticulum associated ribosomes are going to be involved with the synthesis of proteins. They're going to be bound within, or essentially stored within membrane bound uh, structures and um, either inserted into the membrane or secreted from the cell. And so we're going to be looking at like enzymes for neurotransmitters um, if we're looking at something being secreted or some of these specialized membrane proteins that we know uh, need to be present in order to have the electrical properties of the neuron. Uh, extending off of the cell body, in many cases we're going to have, in this case we're looking at a, a spinal motor neuron. So we've got kind of a stellate, kind of star-shaped uh, appearance. But in most neurons, we're going to have cellular extensions that are going to go out to increase the surface area or increase the, the area that's available to the cell to receive signals if we're taking a look at dendrites, or the ability to, to transmit a signal over a long distance within the body. And in that case, we're looking at an axon, which is going to be extending out towards some type of target cell, whether that target cell is another nerve cell or a, a muscle cell out in the periphery. Now, most of the time, uh, especially in the histological specimens, when we tar start looking for nervous tissues, what we're going to be looking at are going to be the ganglia, because the primary location for nerve cell bodies is going to be in the central nervous system, uh, so looking at the brain or the spinal cord, but you're probably not going to be looking at a whole lot of images uh, associated with the brain or the spinal cord. What you're going to be looking at are images about the other organs of the body, and so we're going to be looking at ganglia, looking for um, nerve cell bodies outside of the uh, central nervous system. And the classic example uh, of a ganglia are the craniospinal ganglia, and these are the ganglia of the, the, the cranial nerves, or most commonly uh, the dorsal root ganglia, the sensory ganglia that are found uh, located uh, just lateral to the spinal cord. If we take a look at the craniospinal ganglia, like the dorsal root ganglia, uh, we're going to see that, again, uh, the cells are going to be relatively large. In this case, they're, they're going to be kind of rounder in appearance. We're going to have a large spheric nuclei, again, a euchromatic, lighter staining appearance to the nuclei, with a distinct nucleolus. Again, it's an indication that we're looking at a cell that's involved with a lot of protein synthesis. We take a look at uh, the cytoplasm of the cell. Again, we've got that initial body, so that granular, basophilic staining appearance, because of all the ribosomes that are present there. If you look at a dorsal root ganglia, uh, the neurons, the sensory neurons, tend to be concentrated together and at the periphery of the ganglia. And you can see clusters of nerves over like the region we've got over here to the left, where you can see the, the actual axon of the nerve surrounded by a kind of a paler staining ring. And that pale staining ring a little bit higher magnification than specialized stains. Now I skipped a slide. The other location where we're going to find neuronal cell bodies uh, within uh, the peripheral nervous system, so essentially outside of the body, are going to be the autonomic ganglia. Either the sympathetic ganglia, they're going to be relatively close to the spinal cord, 
or more commonly the, the parasympathetic ganglia, the branches of the autonomic uh, nervous system. Uh, the parasympathetic ganglia are going to be located uh, within the walls of uh, some of the organs we're looking at, primarily within the digestive system. Uh, if we take a look at this, the cells are going to be more randomly distributed uh, throughout the structure. And so, especially with the parasympathetic ganglia located within the walls of the digestive system, you're going to see these neuronal cells surrounded by either connective tissue or more commonly surrounded by smooth muscle cells. Again, they're going to be fairly easy to identify as neurons because they're going to be a lot larger than the surrounding cells. Basophilic staining appearance to the cytoplasm, large nucleus and distinct nucleus are going to be present. We look at uh, the cells surrounding it. We're going to have some of those satellite swan cells that we talked about in lecture. These are specialized glial cells or neuroglial cells, specialized support cells within the peripheral nervous system. They're going to be surrounding and supporting um, the neuron cell body, the ganglion uh, cell bodies themselves. Now, as you're going outside of those regions, outside of the central nervous system, outside the brain or spinal cord, or outside of those locations where we're going to have these autonomic ganglia, most of the tissues that we see associated with the nervous systems are going to be peripheral nerves or kind of smaller branches of these peripheral nerves. And again, keep in mind that if you're looking at a peripheral nerve, you're looking at a region where the axons are carrying information from one location to another. And so generally what you're going to see are going to be the axons. So you're going to see kind of a, a central pale staining uh, region or maybe a, a little bit of cytoplasm within that area. Uh, but you're not going to see the neurons themselves. So you're not going to see the soma, you're not going to see the neuronal cell body, uh, and you're not going to see the nucleus of the cell. Uh, what you're going to see are the swan cells. And those swan cells are going to be the primary support cells of the peripheral nervous system. If we take a look at them, they're going to look kind of similar to the fibroblasts that we would see in a normal connective tissue area. But in general, the fibroblasts are going to be more flattened, and the fibroblast nuclei then are going to be flattened as well and the fibroblast nuclei are going to be more darker staining. The swan cell nuclei are going to tend to be a little bit more ovoid, so a little bit larger in appearance uh, than the fibroblasts. And the swan cell nuclei also tend to be a little bit more euchromatic, so a little bit lighter staining than what you're going to see within the fibroblasts. Uh, but again, keep in mind that what the swan cells are going to be doing is surrounding and supporting the axon along a, a specific reach, uh, a specific section or segment of the axon. And so this could be either a myelinated or non-myelinated axon, but in both cases, they're gonna be surrounded and supported by a swan cell. So if you see uh, a region of peripheral nerve, what you're gonna be looking at, often is gonna have a little bit of a wavy appearance because you won't wanna you know, stretch your nerves. Um, you wanna have a little bit of, of give in them so that you know, when you reach, when the body moves, you're not tugging on the nerves themselves. So they got uh, a little bit of a twist in them, a little bit of a wavy appearance so that they've got some ability to, to, to lengthen out, to stretch out without damaging the axons themselves. So a lot of times because of this wavy appearance, it's gonna look more wavy than you're gonna see within uh, smooth muscle. Uh, you take a look at it, you're often gonna see some uh, cross-sectional profiles. Again, the axon to the center and then the cytoplasm of the swan cell kind of surrounding it. These are little rings which are gonna be uh, uh, supporting it, uh, the myelin sheaths. Uh, we can take a look at down here, we've got more of a longitudinal uh, approach to uh, these nerves. But again, because of the wavy appearance of a peripheral nerve, sometimes you're going to get it in cross sections, sometimes in, in longitudinal sections. And that's a, a common way of seeing it. So you've got a wavy appearance, lots of swan cell nuclei, both cross section and longitudinal section. So it's going to be a characteristic of a peripheral nerve. Again, the, the important thing that the myel I'm sorry, the swan cells are going to be doing is myelinating uh, these axons. And so in this case, we've got a, a nice section of a highly uh, myelinated nerve. Uh, what we're going to be able to see is the axoplasm, the cytoplasm of the axon to the center of these structures. We're going to see a pale region, and that pale region is going to represent the myelin. And that, again, if you remember the characteristics of the myelin, it's mainly phospholipid, so it's mainly... Uh, essentially fats and lipids, uh, which are going to be washed out in the process of preparing these tissues for hematoxylin eosin. So we're going to have a, a relatively pale ring around the axon, and then outside of that, we're going to have that swan cell cytoplasm out there. And so again, keep in mind the swan cells are alive, so they're going to have some cytoplasm, have some nuclei associated with the swan cells out here. Uh, they're going to be surrounding and supporting these axons that are to the center. 
if we were to take a look at this in a longitudinal section, we may be able to see some nodes of rod VA. Uh, it's a little bit harder, especially in a histological preparation. We can see it often if we you know, tease the nerve out and dissect it a little bit. Uh, but it's often difficult in a, a normal um, body tissues type slide. Uh, but the nodes of rod VA are essentially gaps between myelinated segments, or essentially gaps uh, along an axon between where one swan cell is located and the next swan cell is located. If we take a look at, uh, again, a peripheral nerve, we can see the connective tissue sheaths which are going to be supporting it. And so in this case, we're looking at, again, a cross-section of a, a peripheral nerve over here. In area one, we're going to have essentially lots of axons, lots of swan cells supporting them, and a relatively fine connective tissue, a very delicate connective tissue network of collagen fibers, uh, which are going to be produced by both swan cells and a few fibroblasts. Uh, but generally, you're not going to be able to really identify the fibroblasts within this region. Uh, so that's going to be the endoneurium in, in one on this slide over here. Surrounding these kind of bundles of axons, these bundles of, of nerve fibers, is going to be the perineurium, perier for around uh, the nerve. And so this is going to be a more cellular connective tissue sheath, and it's going to be a, essentially establishing a distinct bundle of um, axons, a distinct bundle uh, of nerves within a region. Got a little bit more elaborate uh, collagen and connective tissue that's going to be present there maybe a few fibroblasts uh, and some smaller blood vessels. Uh, you're also going to be able to see some small blood vessels uh, inst among uh, the axons within the endoneurium. We've got a little bit of a capillary uh, in this region right here that I'm outlining with the arrow. Uh, but you're going to have larger blood vessels within the perineurium. And then surrounding the perineurium is going to be the epineurium in three on this diagram over here in this uh, micrograph. Uh, the epineurium is going to be a more dense connective tissue. It's going to be more of a protective, supportive connective tissue, which is going to surround either the perineurial bundle or a cluster of perineurial uh, in sheath uh, bundles. And so often you can see this in a larger nerve as a connective tissue that surrounds bundles of smaller nerves within that region. Again, the epineurium, uh, what you're going to see is a dense connective tissue kind of woven together. I see fibroblasts within the area as well as uh, larger blood vessels within this region. And this finishes our, our pre-lab activity uh, for the nervous tissues. Uh, as always, uh, hopefully this is information that will help you go through the, the slides and the images with this topic to be able to identify the important concepts. If you have any questions, feel free to email me uh, at hoffmanj at Thank you.